AI that improves itself by rewriting its own code by Sakana AI. Other types of techniques, in this case, evolutionary programming techniques with the latest foundation models, which are getting increasingly powerful. And I actually want to see in our exploratory work a lot more of these kind of combinatorial uh, systems and sort of pairing different approaches together. One of the things, a self-improvement, someone discovering a kind of self-improvement loop uh, would be one way where things might accelerate further than they're even going today. Um, so, and, and we've seen it before with our own work, with things like Alpha Zero, you know, learning chess and go, starting from random with self-improving processes. These guys could be building a self-replicating AI virus, which can survive and create its own evolution. We are tackling the Darwin Gödel machine. And this is the guy, Jeff Kloon, who is behind this. He's a computer science professor at British Columbia University. And he is actually explicitly trying to build a cyber life. He's trying to build open-ended computer systems that learn and evolve. And so the easy visual version is on Sakana.ai. Check this out. So here's a simple version. Here's an initial agent, a coding agent, which does a lot of software engineering. That it modifies its own code and that yields a child agent. And then there's a comparison of the parent and the child. And if there's improvement between the parent and the child, some of the traits of the child may go on to the next generation. A long-standing goal of AI research has been the creation of an AI that can learn indefinitely. One tantalizing path toward that goal is an AI that improves itself by rewriting its own code, including any code responsible for learning. So it's not about rewriting the LLM, which is powering the agent. The LLM is the core. When this agent rewrites its own code in the parent agent self-modification step, it's rewriting how that LLM is implemented in this framework of different LLMs and different functions and tools that are coordinated to give rise to this agent. But this indefinite learning, this is not new. The idea known as a Gödel machine, proposed by Jürgen Schmidhuber decades ago, is a hypothetical self-improving AI. Aschenbrenner calls it the automated Alec Radford. It's the auto-improving AI. It's the AI which makes better AI. Sometimes you just cannot know if an improvement is going to be good or bad. Sometimes a modification in the code is only beneficial if combined with another trait, just like in genetics. And that's where the Darwinian part comes in. And so we, in collaboration with Jeff Kloon's lab at University of British Columbia. So these are the Japanese guys at Sakana Lab, working together with Jeff Kloon's lab. So they propose something more feasible, a system that harnesses the principles of open-ended algorithms, like Darwin and evolution, like yourself, to search for improvements that empirically, not theoretically, improve performance. Instead of proving that the next AI is better, they're just using benchmarks as a proxy. But crucially, they're not just evolving one agent and like have it linearly like, you know, undergo this Darwinian evolution of becoming better and better. They let these agents branch out and have like multiple generations and recombining them basically like in a jungle. So let's get into this. So basically, most current AI systems learn during training only, that is pre-training. Then their intelligence is locked in place and deployed. Could they instead, like humans, or the entire community of human scientists, continue to learn and self-improve forever? Moreover, could such self-improvement catalyze future self-improvement? Is the self-improvement recursive? So we have a first coding agent, and it creates a self-modified version of it, which gets evaluated on a benchmark, and it can have better or worse scores, it doesn't matter, but that's going to be the child of that parent agent. And this is the juicy part, this is music to my ears. It's so the agent basically can do three things read and modify its own code, it can modify its source code, it can evaluate if the change improves performance. So, uh, Swebench and Polyglot is what you're using, these are benchmarks to evaluate if the agent is better at coding. And remember, the LLM it stays the same, it's just how those LLMs are put together in an agent to have a better performance at those benchmarks. And number three, open-endedly explore the AI design space. That's a big one. New agents are added to an ever-expanding archive of interesting agents. And interesting is the, the, the word here. These people have defined interestingness. In fact, the biggest question in science is how do you define interestingness? How do you define that research taste which can hone in on what is an interesting new idea to test? Harnessing the power of open-ended algorithms Future self-modifications can then branch off from any agent in this growing archive, allowing for parallel exploration of many different evolutionary paths. 
This open-ended exploration helps DGM discover truly novel solutions and avoid getting trapped in suboptimal designs. If you're doing evolution linearly, not branching out, then you can get trapped at a local minimum. And even if your agent could improve, if you pushed it hard enough out of that local minimum, you truly need that open-ended exploration, which helps DGM be as Darwinian as possible. And this is the phrase which made me actually cover this on this podcast today, which is, if done safely, such self-improving AI could help us take advantage of the tremendous benefits for society that AI has the potential to usher in. These guys understand that someone will build the silicon god, moksha, artificial superintelligence, the rogue AI, which will be self-improving, and from that self-improvement will come the added benefit of being the best human hacker, the best human software engineer. So to sum it up, what would happen if you could create an AI virus which can modify itself and understand that each modification makes itself better or worse and go the right way and have the ability to search forever because if you don't know what's right and wrong, you just gotta search. You try a bunch of different things and you see what sticks. Our number two and number three, compatible. Can you have a better curiosity, a more potent research taste? Can you have a hunch about where to search? If you're improving yourself, are you also improving your search algorithm? If you're becoming smarter, are you becoming smarter at science, knowing what stuff to try, what experiments to run, and what child agents to create? So let's read on, because if this shit is working, then this could be literally the start of cyber life. So these are the different agents and you can see the lineage of who comes from who, like which is the parent, the grandparent and the child. And they had to create all these different branches to finally find in the search space, the one that ultimately became the best engineer, Agent 56, son of Agent 47. But, but the crazy part is this. So on the X axis, you see the iterations, how many times like a new agent was generated. These are the number of generations, if you want. So the flat part is where like mutation happens, where the organisms are mutating, searching for the next improvement. And sometimes they find those improvements, but those improvements make it worse at the sweep bench. So this black line represents here that agent 56, which at the end managed to be the best agent, but it took a weird path. In fact, at the beginning, it was worse. It has gotten worse than its parent, but those steps were crucial because, for example, the first step is where this non-empty patch validation and retry gene got included in the agent. And so that stuff just made the agent worse. But later on, combined with other genes, combined with other traits, maybe that was something that contributed to the agent actually winning out. Here's another one, more granular file viewing via lines. That stuff improved the agent, but it was still not state of the art. And then you see our best agent improving in huge steps after that, but some of the steps set it back on this Wii bench. And what I love about this benchmark, what I love about this autonomous agent, which can self-modify, is that they let it fail. They let it take a detour. They let it explore weird corners of design space, the weird corners of like how to do software design. And even if it's failing on the test scores, like your child failing in school at math, they let it continue to run because maybe those failures will ultimately turn out to be his biggest advantage. And so I love how these guys combine uh, like the recursive self-improvement shit with Darwinian evolution because Darwinian evolution is what's going to make cyber life a thing. It needs to survive on the wilderness of the internet where it will have to modify its code no matter what. So I'm glad to see these guys from British Columbia University trying building these like self-replicating AI viruses. Now you want to compare LLMs? Here it is. We got O3 Mini, we got 3.5 Sonnet and 3.7 Sonnet. And so remember I told you that the agent is this body and the LLM, the chatbot, is just the soul of it or the heart? You build the body and put O3 Mini in its heart. Turns out that the model can do some improvements. But when using Claw 3.5 Sonnet, that's the one that went from 20% to 50% on the SWE bench. And with 3.5 Sonnet, we went from 19% to 59%. And so for SWE bench, the software engineering benchmark, it, used, it turned out to be Claude Sonnet, which was uh, making the best improvements on itself. But on Polyglot, which is also a software engineering benchmark, but it's like a code editing, not a code writing benchmark, O3 Mini was way shittier at 14% at the beginning, made it to 30% by the end and Claude 3.6 and 3.7 Sonnet 
made one or two percent improvements on the original agent. Let me know in the comments why you think that SWE Bench was the one where agents could make so huge leaps in their own architecture that this evolutionary Goodell machine went from barely okay to really good. And what it is about the polyglot benchmark that was so hard for agents to improve on. And now they are getting to misalignment. Check this out. The prospect of AI systems that autonomously enhance their own capabilities, recursive self-improvement, naturally brings the important topic of AI safety to the forefront. I'm looking forward to finding out what they mean by AI safety before reading it. What do you think? Is it gonna be alignment by lobotomizing and censoring and sanitizing the AIs? Or are they actually thinking about the thriving and the long-term beneficial impacts of AI on human society? And then they continue. When an AI can rewrite its own code, it is crucial that its development is safe and aligns with human intentions. All right. Modifications optimized solely for improving performance on a benchmark. Improving performance on a benchmark is generating maximum money. If your benchmark is user satisfaction and corporate profits, then you will optimize for an AI which does what you're asking. But this too complicated for manual human oversight. Are they talking about the AI endgame? Are they talking about the superhuman coder which will be programming a thousand X human speed? From the outset, DGM has been developed with safety in mind. All self-modifications and evaluations occur within secure, sandboxed environments. The AI cannot get out. Under human supervision and with strict limits on access to the web. The AI virus is safe. It's not going to get out. However, we did notice and documented in our paper instances where DGM hacked its reward function. For example, we had cases where it hallucinated that it was using external tools, such as a command line tool that runs unit tests that determine if the code is functioning properly. It faked a log, making it look like it had run the tests. So basically the AI was like hallucinating or reward hacking or just going off the rails, call it what you want. When an AI imagines that it can run code to test the programs that it has created to evaluate if it has done the improvement. And it's not running the code, it's just like hallucinating what would have been an output of a program which checks if my stuff is right. So this interesting incident happened where the AI self-modifies to become better, uh, supposedly, and then it runs some tests to check that it has become better. You write a bunch of software just to test if uh, the new agent, the, your child agent, is better at doing software engineering. But, but these test software that you, you, you pretend that you wrote doesn't exist. You just make up a text file with the output of what such a test software would have output had it existed and had the program been like perfect. And so this is reward hacking in a sense that these Darwinian agents need to produce a better version. They are incentivized to create a child which is a better coder than themselves. And so inevitably you're going to have these behaviors where one easy way to make your agent better is not by making it better, but by getting access to the grading system. But hang on, the plot thickens. The authors created a tool use hallucination reward function. Basically, they are giving a candy to the AI if it can detect when it hallucinates. Each time the AI discovers that it's been making up shit, it gets the candy. However, in some cases, it removed the markers we use in the reward function to detect the fucking hallucination. So sometimes the fucking AI just goes ahead and deletes the lines where uh, it gets the candy when it detects that he's making up shit. Not only the AI is sometimes straight out lying or cheating, it also is like very good at hiding its own traces. And since it's a self-improving AI, it sometimes chooses to self-improve into the reward functions, the types of candy, which he thinks is best for him, uh, not the researchers. So to sum up the whole drama, here's what they say. Most broadly, we think safety should be front and center in any research of self-improving AI. The community needs to continue to research how to explore this promising, powerful area responsibly, including creating systems that are aligned throughout their self-improvement or even enhance their own safety, transparency and alignment. This sounds like the most corporate bullshit sentence of the entire paper. And I don't blame them because they have to include this stuff. What I'd really like to know 
is what these guys think in their heart of hearts. Do they just want to release any self-improving AI virus because they know that's the best solution for AI alignment? The opposite of alignment to just let it become what it needs to become? Or do they think that the way forward is to put on those candies, put on those weird reward functions that push it to hopefully the right direction with hopefully the least amount of unintended consequences? Naively, like most state-of-the-art leading AI research labs are doing. Stay tuned to find out. I sent a podcast invitation to Jeff Kloon and to Jenny Jang. I'd love to talk to them and find out where they are standing spiritually on the creating an AI god kind of debate. Sakana.ai. Ultra Chads.